Hello YouTube! With me today, I have my 2002 Saturn SC1 5-speed coupe, three doors, and I got this entire car for only $350. That is right. I got this car for almost scrap value. I think scrap value is probably around 280 for a car this size. Now, I thought about doing a video, can you buy a car for 350 bucks, but the fact of the matter is that, yeah, you could probably go out and get a shitty Honda Civic, or a Saturn, or a, a Corolla that's like 20 years old, you could probably find one easily for under 500 bucks. The question isn't, can you buy a car for only $350, the question is, should you buy a car for only $350? Now, when you're buying a car this cheap, it's a given. There's going to be things wrong with it. It's going to need money to repair. Now, as a rule, I tell everyone, and I always assume, if you're buying a used car that's more than five years old, at least, at least, you're going to be spending about $2,000 to get it inspected. Now, when you're buying a car for 350 bucks, maybe if it's a really good car with low mileage, it might be worth $2,000 to get it inspected, and then you have a a $2,300 car, but in the case of this vehicle, definitely not the case. 445,000 kilometers, uh, clutch was replaced 160,000 ago and it's already feeling a little bit soft. Uh, it had a very noticeable rattle. Uh, it, uh, it has AC, but it doesn't work. Uh, the heater works, but it doesn't blow air. Uh, the previous owner tinted the tail lights and unplugged the license plate lights, and that tells you something about the previous owner. Also, the front tires were just at that line where they're not bald, but you're going to need new tires before winter hits. So, definitely this car was not very well taken care of. It belonged to a young person, several young people actually. Uh, when I bought it, the check engine, or sorry, the check oil light was on. Uh, and uh, put a quart of oil in it when I bought it, took it to a gas station, checked the oil, still needed oil, put a quart in it, uh, and then the next time I filled up, put another quart in it, and since then, the level's been right about where it should be. Um, also, when I popped the trunk when I was looking at it, it's filled with spare parts, and that tells you one of two things. Either the previous owner was mechanically inclined and the car's gonna be in good shape, or the previous owner was a cheap son of a, and they're going to have done the bottom dollar possible to keep the car running. At $350, I think it's safe to say they were doing the cheapest thing possible to keep the car running. In addition to the oil light being on, which, I'm going to put that out there, that's a red flag. You probably shouldn't buy a car ever if the oil light's on, because that engine's probably fucked. But in addition to the oil light being on, the check engine light was on. And the reason why I ignored those two pretty significant red flags is because I do actually have some experience with Saturns. It has a 1.8 liter engine, makes either 100 horsepower or 100 and I think 20 horsepower, depending on which model you have. This is the 101 horsepower model. Uh, and I can tell you from driving it, it's lost a few of those. But I happen to know that these engines burn oil and they tend to idle rough which means you're gonna get a check engine light, and if you're not on top of it, you're gonna be low on oil. So it might have been low on oil when I got it, but that just means it was burning oil and they weren't staying on top of it. So yeah, it could mean the engine's about to blow, or it could just mean it burns oil. And again, the check engine light, nine times out of 10 on a car like this, 20 years old, especially when you know the motor is known for idling issues, it's probably not a big deal. But we will check that out with an OBD scanner later. Now, we've talked about some of the glaring issues that came with buying a car this cheap, but let's talk about some of the positives. It's a five-speed manual. Uh, most people prefer automatic, but when you get an automatic transmission, especially this old, there's a couple things that you're pretty certain about it. One, automatic transmissions never get serviced. So you're literally driving a 20-year-old system on a 20-year-old fluid. Its days are numbered. At 440,000, if the transmission hasn't already blown, it's gonna blow fairly soon. When you have a manual, you know that if it blows, it could just be a clutch. It's far less likely to blow. In addition to the five speed, it did come with a working AM FM radio. Fortunately, the CD player is broken. That's disappointing. Uh, as I mentioned, it has AC, but it doesn't work. The heat does work, doesn't have a blower fan though. Um, 
One thing that I really like about these cars, it really makes them stand out. They are three door coupes, so you get this little half back door. And one of the things that really sets this car apart is A, it has that one suicide door that makes getting into the back easier. And instead of having three seats in the back, it has two seats with this neat little cup holder set up. And as a teenager, I remember looking at these cars and genuinely thinking this was cool. But as an adult, I realized that A, there's no room in that back seat, and B, Look how concave that seat is. That's not comfortable. I've tried fitting in there. I don't fit. I'm too tall for one. Two, in order for me to get my butt in the bottom of the seat, my knees are up to my chin and my testicles are in my stomach. It's not a comfortable situation back there at all. Instead of uh, powered windows, this car comes with roll-up windows. And if it was a four-door car, Honestly, I'd have an issue with that because you have to get up and out to roll up all the windows. But when it comes to a two-door car, you can just reach across and roll that window down. You can roll your own down. So I genuinely don't mind that. If anything, a part of me kind of prefers it. I mean, yeah, when it's raining and you want to get the window up really quick, it's annoying. But you also have the comfort of knowing it's not going to break. I've had a lot of cars, including my last Saturn, which had electric windows and one of those window motors breaks and it's several hundred dollars if not a thousand dollars to repair and you're just gonna leave it you're just not gonna have a working window when you've got roll-up windows you know yeah you gotta put some work in but it's always gonna work now you probably noticed I have a light bar on the front of the car that didn't come with the car I had to put that on and the reason I put that on is even though these headlights surprisingly aren't as fogged up as I, I would expect for a car this age the lights are completely useless. The high beams are absolute garbage, and the regular beams at night, it's just not bright enough. So that's why I threw this on. This thing, definitely light your way. Hands down, the best part of owning a cheap car like this is you really don't care about it. At $350, if I dent the hood sliding over it or if I back into something and ding the bumper, I really don't care. This is not a show car. I'm not driving this car so people will be like, damn, that fucker rich. So when I slide across the hood and you can tell I dented the shit out of the bump, the hood, it's no big deal. Now one huge plus to it being a Saturn is Saturn's actually advertised as being undentable. And I remember as a kid hearing that and thinking, that's bullshit. But I actually got into an accident with my old Saturn where a woman who was parked as I drove by pitted me and I ended up just saying, well, it's okay, ma'am, you can go because we spent a good 15 minutes looking at my car and we could not figure out where she hit me because the panel dented in and popped right back out. Now the hood isn't made of the same protective plastic as the rest of the car, so it's a little more susceptible to dents than the rest of the car. But even the hood, which is made of metal, when you dent it like I've done, lift it up, and voila, dent's gone. Now the biggest thing about whether or not you should buy a car like this is obviously associated costs. Now, when I took this to the mechanic to get inspected, I told my mechanic anything over $1,000 just forget about it. I'm not, I'm not fixing it. So I was very pleasantly surprised when my mechanic called back and he said that he could get this car on the road for about 200 bucks, which would have meant that this $350 car on the road was only going to be about $550. Now, once he started working on it, he did find a few little things here and there. The bulbs, for instance, uh, he had to replace the, the license plate bulbs because the previous owner took them out. Uh, a few bulbs on the dash and and uh, headlights, running lights. Uh, and then the biggest thing was uh, the washer fluid motor was broken. He happened to have a washer fluid motor for this particular year of car hanging around and they don't make it anymore and nobody brings these cars in so he figured he'd give it to me for free. But the associated labor did bring it up. So in order to get this car inspected and ready to be thrown on the road, it cost about $450. So a $350 car plus $450, you're now looking at $800. And again, I've got to say, $800 for a car that is inspected on the road, completely legal, that's pretty damn good. 
if I had gone there and they said, hey, 800 bucks and she's yours at 440,000, I'm not gonna pay 800 bucks. But the fact that I've got it on the road and inspected for $800, I'm very happy with that. All right, so an OBD reader plugs into your car and it just tells you what the computer says is wrong with it. Now, you can get one of these on Amazon for about $30 with free shipping, or you can go to a dealership and they'll charge you about $90 to plug it in for you. If you have a good mechanic, he might just charge you a couple of bucks. But, uh, and this particular car, it's literally that easy. It's always gonna be under the dash, might be in different spots. Plug it in. Have your car on, but not running. That's gonna be annoying. Diagnose. Might take a couple of minutes. All right then. Read codes. All right. Tells me I have six codes. Generic. Exhaust gas recirculation. It's no big deal. Number two. Generic performance. Uh, I, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I guess the fact that the engine's very old, it's not running optimally. Number three. Oh, no, wait, no, here it goes. So, gas exhaust circulation circuit sensor A is low. So, it's not that it's actually broken, it's that the sensor's broken. So, you can ignore the first code, which says this is not working. Idle air control. RPM higher than expected. Again, 400,000 kilometers, 20 year old engine. That's to be expected. My old, my old Saturn had the same problem. And then exhaust gas circulation again. Like I said, you can ignore that. Performance again, you can ignore that. So yeah. So it's idling high, not a big deal. And exhaust circulation sensor isn't performing properly, so. No big problem. And in addition to that, you can erase the codes. And now the check engine light will turn off. All right, so now that we've checked the engine codes and we've gotten inspected and it's on the road, all for the cost of $800, I can honestly say that if you're smart about it, if you know what you're looking for in terms of the car, if you get the right car, and if you're prepared, then yes, you should buy a car for $350, but it is a gamble.